Hello, my name's Jenny and I'm 27 years old. Three years ago, I married the most beautiful person I have ever met, Hugo. He's such a kind and compassionate goofball who makes me feel amazing every day. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for his mother, Maria, Aka, my mother-in-law. She, for some reason, has always had it out for me since day one, and I get it. That's her precious baby boy, and she doesn't want to see him get hurt. She's just interested in protecting his best interests, but I genuinely do believe that she takes things overboard sometimes. She's the type of person who does seemingly small and innocently naive injustices to people, but in reality, she deliberately pushes your buttons and gets on your nerves to make you seem like you're the crazy one. I know we all know someone like that in our lives. Unfortunately, I have to deal with this person because she's my mother-in-law. Anyhow, I was raised differently. I'm the type of person who calls people out on their nonsense, and I tend not to hold back. I think this is why Hugo fell in love with my personality, because he's more of a quiet, soft-spoken person. And just like the saying goes, opposites do indeed attract. I studied a bit of psychology, so believe me when I say that I know that Maria, my mother-in-law, has bad intentions. I think both of our domineering personalities clash, which is probably why she said this the first time I met her. Jenny, don't you think it's time to stop eating so much? The whole table at the restaurant sucked in the air, daring not to speak. I was completely mortified and I'm sure my pale complexion was a great indicator of how embarrassed and flushed I was. It was me, Hugo, who was my boyfriend at the time, Kyle, my father-in-law, and Maria at the table. Kyle was too stunned to speak, and he bowed his head as if he was sharing my embarrassment. Hugo was also feeling embarrassed, but he was also angry at his mother for saying that. He aptly berated her. Really, Mom? That is such an awful thing to say. She can eat as much as she wants to. Oh, oh no, sweetie. I didn't mean any harm. I just wanted to look out for you, you know. I've noticed that you've been gaining a lot of weight. Hugo has been showing me your photos from when you were younger and you looked so much better then. Not like now. But I don't mean to be offensive, sweetheart. I'm just trying to give you some advice. I tried my best to remain calm as I didn't want to cause a scene. But my embarrassment quickly started to turn into irritation. Nonetheless, because this was my first time meeting the family and I wanted to make a lasting impression, because I absolutely adored Hugo. For the first time in a long time, I held my tongue. I just smiled at her politely and thanked her for the unsolicited advice. Situations like that grew in frequency and strength as we got to know each other more. I genuinely believed that the taunting would stop at some point after she had determined that I was good for her son, but it only appeared to be getting worse. I was beginning to get along fine with my father-in-law, Kyle, who is the sweetest man on earth. I see where Hugo gets it from. As much as I was growing closer and closer to everyone else in Hugo's family, Maria appeared to be the only one who disliked me, and for no apparent reason as well. I even got introduced to Jack, who was Hugo's childhood friend. They grew up together. Kyle and Maria practically consider him as a second son. Even though Hugo's whole heart was open to me and it appeared as though his family accepted me with open arms, even his extended family, as well as Jack, it was just Maria who had an issue with me. I'm so grateful for the love and support I managed to identify from the vast and overwhelming majority of Hugo's family. I received this love and support up until my wedding day, where my mother-in-law, of course, tried to do something conniving to get me to look bad. On my special day, she made it a point to be as bothersome and as ridiculous as she could be. Honestly, she was acting like a bridezilla. No, her hair is supposed to be in an updo, just like how I did on my wedding day. I appreciate the help, Maria, but I want my hair to look like this. Hmm, I don't think so. You look so, so ugly. 
The bridal party gasped, but unfortunately, I was used to this, so it wasn't surprising. She quickly tried to rectify her mistake. Oh no, darling, no! I just mean that you can look so much better than you do now, and I would just like to say that I see a lot of myself in Jenny. She is such a bright young woman, and even though I looked much better than she did at her age, I would like to say that she is beautiful in her way. Although my father-in-law managed to get my mother-in-law to stop her ruthless antics on the day, the pain and bitterness I felt remained. This was not in my nature to remain silent and unresponsive. I was losing my firecracker energy. This woman was slowly draining me, and it had to be put to an end. Fast forward three years to where the events of today's story take place. We were all sitting at the dining table of Hugo's childhood home, and where his parents still live on a Sunday night. My mother-in-law had ever so graciously invited us over, including Jack, meaning that it must have been something important she wanted to tell us all. Although I had my suspicions about her randomly making this dinner plan, which later on were affirmed, it was a pleasant surprise. At some point, the ball dropped, and this is the beginning of what turned out to be a very messy series of events. My mother-in-law started to garner everyone's attention as she had an important announcement to make. She pulled out a paper and started reading it. Attention, everyone! I have an announcement to make, as you all know, my birthday's coming up, and so I wanted to let you know what I've been planning for the very special day. I've decided that we're going to take a trip to Hawaii. The paper was a confirmation of the Hawaii trip. That sounds fantastic. What? That's amazing, Jenny. I've always wanted to go to Hawaii. Oh my goodness! This is great news. I'm so excited. I don't even know what to say. Thanks so much, Ma. Oh, actually, you're not coming. Um, honey, what are you talking about? This wasn't part of the plan. I made some last-minute arrangements and managed to cancel her ticket before they gave us extra charges. Oh, so my ticket was already bought? She just went ahead and cancelled it? Why does this woman hate me so much? Mom, what are you talking about? Jack and I seem to be the only ones silent in this whole situation, as a whole flurry of harsh words was exchanged back and forth. Eventually, after some poking and prodding for a decent enough excuse, Maria finally stated, "Okay, okay, fine. I'll tell you the reason why I thought it best that Jenny sits this family event out. As you all know, I'm getting a little bit older, and I've decided that I want the remaining years of my life to be centered on being around the people I care most about. Unfortunately, Jenny just doesn't belong on that list." Wow, mom! Really? What is wrong with you? Nothing is wrong with me. Don't you dare disrespect me. I'm just saying that. Well, you know, Jenny can't be considered part of our family since she's not related by blood. Well, by that logic, then Jack shouldn't be able to go either, right? Since he isn't technically family, as you're stating. But we all know that's preposterous, and he is part of the family. And ever since Hugo and Jenny got married, that means she is part of the family. Well, obviously with Jack, it's different. You know that he's just so precious, and he's our sweet baby angel. He's always been here, but Jenny hasn't. So that's why I'm just not comfortable with her coming on the trip. And it's my birthday, so I get to decide whatever we want. Come on, Jenny, we're leaving at once. No, the way that I firmly said no commanded all of the attention in the room, including my antagonist who was trying to stifle a smile this entire time. But at that moment, she wiped it off her face. Maria, you've made it clear since the beginning that you do not like me, and every day for the past three years, I have endured your insufferableness. You think we all don't see how you act? You think that we all don't notice that you're a narcissist, little girl? You better watch the way you speak to me. You are in my house, and I—not for long. I'm not. I'm just about to leave, actually, but not before I say this. I turned to my loving husband, who was looking at his mother with angry eyes. 
babe, I love you with my whole heart. And I have tried to endure this for such a long time, but I see now that your mother will never accept me into this family. No matter how hard I try and no matter how many times I bite my tongue, she will always have a problem with me. You should go on this trip. You can't miss it. As much as your mother is crazy, she's still your mother and you love her and she loves you. So you have to go. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. I then turned to my mother-in-law whose mouth was agape because of what I just said. And as for you, unfortunately for you, I am in love with your son and I am not going anywhere. You might think that you can push me away, but I will always be here. Even when you go to Hawaii, you will always be thinking about me because, if I'm being honest, I think you're obsessed with me. How dare you? I should slap you right now. I'm not finished. You are obsessed with me. You're obsessed with tearing me down and I cannot even imagine why when all I've done is shown you kindness and patience even when you didn't deserve it. But enough is enough. You don't want me to go to Hawaii with you. Fine. You don't think I'm part of the family. Fine. But I will always be here as long as I breathe. I will always be here for Hugo, Kyle and even Jack. But never for you. At that moment, I realized that I finally shut her up. She left her mouth open as if she was searching for something to say. Anything to say. But her mind wouldn't let her. Finally, I managed to keep her quiet. I said goodbye to the rest of the family members, kissed my husband on the cheek, and began to walk out. Let me drive you home at least. I can't let you take a cab. Please don't worry about me, babe. I love you and thank you so much for loving me, but I'll be fine. You have a trip to discuss. Okay, if you say you're fine, then I'll believe you. Oh, don't forget your purse. Right, my purse. I left in the kitchen once I arrived. At some point, though, Maria went into the kitchen, I think to catch her breath after the whole situation. After being berated like that, I too would have done something similar. What do you want? Don't worry about me, sweetheart. I'm just here to collect my things. Well, make it quick. I want you out of my house. I can't believe you said those things to me. With that, she quickly stormed out. She was filled with so much anger that she didn't even want to see me out the door. At that moment, I scoffed at her ridiculousness and reached for my purse when I noticed a piece of paper next to it. My eyes glanced over it and noticed that it was Maria's handwriting. I believed at the time that it must have been a piece of paper detailing the itinerary for the trip because I was feeling slightly bitter about not going. I wanted to take a peek and see just how much fun I'd be missing out on. I grabbed it and began to read the paper. Dearest Jack, you know that you have always been like a son to me, and you know that I love you dearly. Oh, so this is a letter to Jack. A bit strange, but I guess it's thoughtful. For some reason, my curious eyes began to read further. And the love and care you have shown for me throughout the years will never be forgotten. I hate to admit it, but even when it comes to my son, Hugo, I feel as though the love we once shared is no longer there. Wait, what? Is she saying she loves Jack more than she loves Hugo? That simply couldn't be. I continued to read the paper, and with each new line, I got more astonished at what I was reading. I simply couldn't believe it. There was a lot to unpack, and even though it wasn't my place to read that letter, I'm really glad that I did. After reading the entirety of the letter, I began to pace in the kitchen, wondering what to do. And then it hit me. All of the people who needed to know about this letter's existence were all sitting in that room. If ever there was a time to act, it was now. I reread the letter one more time just to make sure that I wasn't crazy and imagining things, and just as I thought, yup, it was the same thing I read the first time. I waltzed out into the dining room to meet only three pairs of eyes looking back at me. Jenny, I am so, so sorry for what my wife is trying to put you through. Don't worry one bit. You will come with us to Hawaii as long as I'm around. She's just in a funk right now. But don't worry, I'll convince her to change her mind. 
I don't know what's gotten into her recently, but don't worry, I will change her mind, as I said. Kyle, please don't worry about me, as I said. I'm fine. I'm more than fine, because I have found some interesting news that I need to share with everyone, and I especially need to share it with Hugo. Hugo and Jack's ears perked up. I saw the flash of worry that ran across Hugo's face. Perhaps he thought that this was too much for me to handle and that I wanted to ask for a divorce. Oftentimes, when I would complain about his mother to him, he'd agree with me and wonder how I managed to keep up with her nonsense for so long. I'd always tell him that it was because I loved him way too much to let him go, and that I'd go to hell and back for him. I noticed that wicked witch of the West wasn't around, so I asked, Where is Maria? She needs to be here for this, too. Oh, I mentioned earlier, she appears to be in a bit of a funk after you shouted at her. She said she got a mild headache and wanted to nurse it with a nap upstairs. She won't be down for a while. You know how she gets about her beauty sleep. I was all too familiar with Maria's awkward and unnecessary routines and regimes that would often inconvenience others. I huffed in irritation. This is just really important. She has to be here. It's okay, Jenny, you can tell us. And we'll inform her when she wakes up. I hesitated, considering the information that I knew. I wanted to see the redness on her face from embarrassment. I think you should just go ahead and tell us. Sweetie, it's okay. And you know, Hugo has anxiety. It would be bad to keep him waiting. That was true. Hugo's anxiety got really bad at times, and I could see him begin to fidget from the anticipation. Okay, fine. I'll show you guys what I found. When I was in the kitchen collecting my purse and getting ready to leave, I found something interesting that I think you all need to know about. I pulled out the paper I found and began to read. It reads, Dearest Jack, you know that you have always been like a son to me, and you know that I love you dearly, and the love and care you have shown for me throughout the years will never be forgotten. I hate to admit it, but even when it comes to my son, Hugo, I feel as though the love we once shared is no longer there. What the? What is she saying? What is this? I continued reading. Hugo, I just don't see eye to eye like we used to, and honestly, I think it's because of Jenny. Ever since he married that girl, he no longer has time for me. He doesn't love me, and therefore, I don't think I love him. I love you, and you are my son. With that being said, I want to let you know that I am going to update my will so that you inherit all of my belongings and not Hugo. I know it might hurt him, but honestly, at this point, I don't care. It's that wretched Jenny girl. She's the one who has poisoned my love for him. I hope you received this letter well. The reason why I didn't want to approach you about it in person is that and it pains me to admit this, I couldn't risk seeing the rejection on your face. I know you love Hugo like he's your brother, and most likely you won't approve, but I don't care. I'm giving you everything, the money, the house, the cars, and even my small businesses. They're all yours, whether you like it or not. If you want to talk about this further, please call me and we can discuss it. I look forward to hearing your response. I will love you forever and always, your second mom. I finally looked up from reading the letter and I was met with a flurry of mixed emotions. Kyle looked like he was going to cry. Jack looked stunned, but Hugo? Hugo looked like he was going to murder someone. I can't believe she said all those things. Is she being serious right now? So the reason why she's doing all of this is because of Jenny? She hates Jenny so much that she'd not include me in her will? Just to spite me and Jenny? She's officially lost her mind, you guys. I, I don't even know what to say. This has gone far enough. I've had it with this woman and her toxic behavior. What are we going to do? At that moment, I had an idea. One week had gone by and it was time for the designated Hawaii trip. Maria woke up and found a letter from her husband on her bedside table. It read, Good morning, gorgeous. We decided to let you get some more beauty rest. Don't worry, your bags have all been packed. Just find us at the airport. Maria 
then got ready and headed to the airport, looking around frantically for the people with whom she was meant to go on this birthday trip. She tried calling them, but they all wouldn't answer. She assumed that they were already on the plane and therefore couldn't answer her call. She rushed frantically and boarded her flight, hoping to just meet them once they landed in Hawaii. She endured the 12-hour flight, and once she boarded, she video-called Kyle. Hello? Kyle, where the hell are you guys? I woke up late and saw your note, which was a cute idea if I hadn't woken up so late. I got to the airport and tried calling you guys, but none of you were responding. I just assumed that you already boarded. But it doesn't matter now because now we're in Hawaii. How amazing. Tell me where you are so we can meet up and let the festivities begin. That won't be happening, Maria. Well, what do you mean? Tell me where you are. I'm at home. What? You heard me. I'm at home. We're all at home. Say hi, everyone. Kyle panned out his phone to show that everyone, himself, Jack, Hugo, and me, were all in his house, sitting at the same dining table where we all heard the tragic news from a week before. What do you mean? Why are you at home? You see, Maria, Jenny brought some interesting information to our attention a week ago. And ever since then, we decided that we'd much rather spend our time in boring old Florida with her than anywhere else with you. Maria gasped. You think we wouldn't find out? Find out what, my baby? Oh, don't you baby me. You were really going to cut me out of the will, Mom. I, 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 who? How did you even find out about that? Oh, that wretched girl that you hate so much? Jenny found your stupid letter in the kitchen. I don't know what you're talking about. Maria, lying right now is only adding more nails to the coffin. Jack, tell them. you got to believe me. I did nothing of the sort. We all read the letter, Maria. The gig is up. But, but, I didn't do anything. Jenny is making everything up. Oh, am I? You are so pathetic, it actually makes me sick. We all know what you said and what you tried to do. Thank God I was nosy enough to read the whole thing. Hugo, Kyle, please. No, Maria, enough is enough. You're done. You don't get to say anything else. You messed up big time. Your hatred has caused you to be blind. Now you have to suffer the consequences of being alone on your birthday because of what you've done. I hope you can use this time in Hawaii to reflect on your actions. But I'll be alone. It won't be fun. Maybe people would like to hang out with you more if you weren't such a raging witch. Have fun. And with that, Kyle hung up the phone. We all let out a sigh of relief and I was the first person to start laughing. Eventually, Hugo joined in and before we knew it, we were all bursting with laughing and cackling at the dining table, just laughing at how crazy the situation was. The look on her face once she realized the gig was up was hilarious. Her face turned pale. All the blood drained from her face and I could tell that that was the first time in a long time that she felt embarrassed. Maria had to spend her vacation alone, oftentimes calling Kyle to see if he at least would come and join her because cancelling the reservations she made would be expensive. But every time he kept denying it. He said that when she comes back, they were going to have to implement some ground rules that were to be followed if she still wanted to be married to him. Maria began to be very apologetic and frantic, a complete 180 from what she normally acted like, which was honestly surprising. Hugo also mentioned that if Maria still wanted to be in his life, she had to drastically change her attitude, otherwise he was ready to walk out of her life forever. Their relationship is still rocky, and Hugo said that if Maria ever disrespected him ever again, even if it's the smallest snide remark she could make, he would cut her off completely, the same way that she was planning on cutting him off. As for Jack, he thought it best to stop being so nice to Maria as it was clearly enabling her toxic behavior. So not only did Maria end up spending a miserable time in a beautiful place, but she also risked losing the three most important people in her life. 
She now has very rocky relationships with all of them, and she has to change to be better. As for me, I messaged her and told her that I need time to see if I'm going to forgive her for all of her injustices, and she was apologizing and begging for me to talk some sense into the men in her life. I obviously refused, stating that this is the bed she made for herself, and now she has to lay in it. And even to this day, Maria is still trying to mend the very broken relationships that she caused. I just hope that she learned her lesson.